Gundam.tk presents Providence Gundam. Hey again everybody, it's Robert one of you for two R's two B's from YouTube and Gundam.tk. You've seen the unbox of the 1 100th Providence Gundam from Gundam Seed and now from these empty plates it's time to take a look at the constructed parts before turning it into its full mobile suit. All constructed, these are the main parts without the dragoons attached that you're going to get to make up the body. The standard armament consists of a very large beam rifle, a small shield, and a large beam saber which plugs into the shield. The main feature worth writing home about though is the dragoons that go on the waist armor and on the backpack there's five there which attach onto that circle. This being a non-grade, some of the parts are going to be pretty simple and that's evident in the feet with their solid red parts there and just a grey, it's not quite white, with a polycap. Which will attach onto the leg down here and you're going to have a mount mechanism, it's just a polycap if you pop this part and this part up, you can see that it's going to rotate around there and it can bend this far off to the side. Altogether now you're going to get a mobility in terms of the knees there, you can bend it like that and that, so not quite 90 but 135 you could say. These are just two big grey parts put in there, you can put some lining in. You've got a nice dark bla uh, blue piece there, some grey. Big panels here with the opportunity for lining, although a lot of it is just edging. Um, down here if you want to actually put in some lining you can make that look a little bit jazzier. And you've got this part here which gets out of the way if you want to bring the toes up. So the legs solid if uh, not a little bit simple with those seam lines right down the middle. The waist is certainly large and it's only going to get bigger when you actually attach the dragoons, two on each side and two on the back. In terms of the hip mechanisms though, you've just got a solid ball joint there, nothing's going to move. The front skirts do lift up independently. You've got a red piece there and a dark navy blue piece inside. For putting these parts on, first of all they're just on a pulley cap here so you can rotate them off to the back if you choose to and you better put the small ones on there. You can just plug those in and here on the back you're also going to have these parts which do not move independently, lining opportunities there and plug those in and you'll see how much this thing will start to fill out if you've got six of those attached. It's always good to see that even with this not being a master grade that you are going to be getting not things like seals or anything just lining places. You're going to get some good deep channels there and separate colors which right away just says that this is a little bit better than a 1 1 kit to me. The chest continues the pleasant surprises for me. First of all, you're going to have a big blocky grey part up there. You could add a little bit of grey colour if you wanted to that. But the fact that they give you the light grey down here for the cannons, which is uh, just nice, otherwise you could imagine that being a seal or just solid blue. By doing that, you're going to get the colour variation that along with the dark black here with the yellow vents on the inside, it's not quite the way the pros have made it out to be on the side of the box if you were to bring this in here. You can just see that they've got yellow on the outside. Here we're going to have yellow on the inside, black on the outside, but with a little bit of lining you're still going to get that gundam feel of the white, well grey, red, blue and yellow. The pipes really set this apart as being a bad guy. I think back to the Zaku 2 and its pipes going all over the place. You've got three on each side so they're looking impressive and on the back don't expect any fancy mechanisms for plugging in the backpack or the shoulders. It's solid, no points of articulation, but it looks good. The arms are big and ridiculous which I think is going to add to the visual appeal of the MS when it's put all together. The shoulders, they can bend up here and actually go down all the way if you chose to. You'll see that they just attach on by polycap. The shoulders can rotate around like this and the bend at the elbow is only going to give you a 90. You've got a mount point here on both sides which is going to allow you to attach the shield on. The manipulators down at the bottom just attached by a ball joint, nothing fancy. Lining chances there, especially with the edging. But what I like to see is again, they put in these grey parts here on the inside so that these aren't just big empty shells off to the side. And good red pieces, no stickers, and you get that colour variation that from other angles is going to make this kit stand out. Where I was pleased with the rest of the Gundam though for having lots of different colour and small parts just to break up the monotony, here with the beam rifle and the large one that it is, it is incredibly dull because there are no other colours. You'd think that you could get a nice part here, or some green stickers to put in there or something just to break it up but no you're not. You do have good grooves though if you want to put in some lining, I've just gone with black in there. In terms of articulation you're going to be able to move this up and down off to either side. The hands are going to fit in, they don't have any pegs so you're going to have to pop them off to put this in. Hopefully it's going to stay and not get in the way, especially as bazooka type weapons do when they tend to sit over the shoulder. 
I'm much more impressed with the shield just because it goes back to adding those little colored pieces which are just going to break up the overall grayness of this suit. So first of all, you've got a nice navy blue piece in there, some lining grooves in there if you want to do some edging. Blue down here, green camera lens, which looks good. This is where you're going to attach on the large beam saber, and you've got these black cannons which come through. But it's the underside. A lot of Gundam shields, especially high grades, when you put them on, the backside looks terrible, and in a lot of poses that will be evident. But in this one, it's got a unique feature to it in the fact that, hey, if I'm protecting with this hand, why not protect that hand? And you can pop this open and plug the hand in there, where it fits like a glove, solid fit, close that up, and now all of a sudden it looks like he's lost his hand, but it sort of makes sense if you're using this as a weapon. So just in the fact that it's unique, I think that this shield with its color variations and the way you cover it up is a winner here for me. When you add on this oversized beam saber, which is quite an interesting unique part with all sorts of little raised parts down here at the edge, you can see why that even though the Providence is known as a ranged mobile suit, especially in Gundam vs. Gundam, you don't want to get up too close to this guy. To the hip dragoons, where you're going to have four of the smaller size, which sit on the left and right skirt, and you've got this one for the back. A little bit disappointing just in the fact that they're so simple when you put them together, and simple because, yeah, they're just one piece. So cut them off the sprue, and you're ready to go. They do give you grooves there if you want to add. I went with black lining there, down here, and you can have these parts here. You can see that it's starting to smudge over time, but hopefully if that's on the back, it's going to be hidden. Simple, effective, they do attach on easily, but really nothing to write home about. The backpack, however, is if only because of how ridiculous it is and how it overpowers the whole MS design and just bulks it out, which I think makes the provenance quite interesting in terms of visual appeal. First, in terms of parts, you're going to be having some gray down here, some blue here, and some blue on the back. So if you look at it from the back, at least the monotony is broken up. Very simple design back here, but because they give you that channel for lining, it works. Onto the small dragoons, where you're going to have bending points here, so that while Rala Cruz is yelling at you, he can bend these forward and blast for these, and of course, they shoot off, and you'll see that there's little grooves there which are going to fit for these. In terms of the larger ones, you're going to have three identical ones that if you blast them out, they attach in using a polycap attachment there, and there's nice slits here to put these parts in. For these parts themselves, they're going to have some lining channels here. I just put in a few black dots. This is a separate piece, so you can go and line that as you choose. I chose to keep it simple, but these certainly look like impressive weapons if they were blasting around much more so than these little guys. But the backpack overall looks solid so far. Outside of the chest, which it's conveniently attached onto, my favorite part of the Providence Gundam is the head. And I think the big thing for me is just the fact that they gave you these big black parts here to go on top of the very light gray, almost white. You've got the red there for the differentiation, eyes, seals for eyes, and you've actually got a nice yellow piece in there for the camera. You don't have to put a sticker on there, it just looks good in yellow. But I think this looks like an excellent Gundam head. It would serve to be a very good good guy head, but by putting on those black parts, it just creates the impression that there might be more to this Gundam than meets the eye, and sure enough, at the end of Seed, we saw that there was. And a pan around, you can see that there's lots of places you can put in lining. Some I've done well, some not so much. A little bit of color on the front there, especially you've got good deep lines there on the face mask, so I think it looks pretty good overall. That'll wrap up my look at the parts of the 1-100th Providence Gundam, but my first impression is that I was a little worried going back to 2004 with a non-grade as opposed to a master grade. Of course, I'd love a master grade of this kit, but since that doesn't seem likely to happen, I'm pretty happy with what we've got. The feet are simple, the ankles work, the legs have enough color differentiation, as do things like the shield and the chest and the head work for me, along with that backpack which seems to be doing the job. If they all go together well, and uh, it stands up and isn't too bulky and can keep its uh, few poses that can go in. I'll be pretty happy with this kit overall. Anyway, everybody, why don't you let me know what you think of the parts of the MS of the video. Always love to hear from you. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next part where we put it all together. See ya. No, I'm telling you, Schumacher should have stayed retired and left his legacy intact. Well, he didn't have a terrible season, no. He's not the same guy he used to be.